सो हेलो एवरी वन हेलो वर्ल्ड टू ब्लॉक चेन डेवलपमेंट इस वीडियो में आई एल ट्राई टू शेयर यू द कम्प्लीट रोड मैप टू ब्लॉक चेन डेवलपमेंट वाई इट इज हॉट राइट नाउ वाई यू शुड लर्न एंड हाउ यू कैन बिकम अ ब्लॉक चेन डेवलपमेंट फ्रॉम जीरो स्किल्स टू कम्प्लीट स्किल्स रिक्वायर्ड टू बी अ ब्लॉक चेन डेवलपर विद अ टॉक विद अ बिटकॉइन ब्लॉक चेन डेवलपर एज वेल सो बेसिकली देर आर टू टाइम्स ऑफ ब्लॉक चेन डेवलपर वन इज कोर ब्लॉक चेन डेवलपर हु मेक द ब्लॉक चेन जैसे कि फॉर एग्जाम्पल when you are making apps for example if you want to make an app on iphone let's say you are not making the whole app store you're not making the whole iphone right so basically that will be blockchain app developer aap ek app bana rahe ho for iphone that will be blockchain app developer and if you're making the whole app store whole technology of blockchain like a new solana 2.0 that will be blockchain core developer so we will be mainly talking about blockchain app development and as an example currently blockchain development is so hot right now that most companies need this skill so according to udacity blockchain is number one hard skill that companies need the most right now and if you want to look at market cap and average salaries so let's go to zip recruiter there you will find out average salary of a blockchain developer in atlanta is 150000 and if you want to compare with my field mobile app developer software engineer that is around 83000 dollars in georgia and agar aapko dekhna in the most expensive part of the us that is palo alto california then over there blockchain developers are making on an average 174000 dollars in palo alto and compared to mobile app developers that is around 92000 so almost double of a difference if you get into this field right now and also if you want to look at market cap of cryptocurrencies first of all let's talk about what is market cap so let's say that apple has market cap of 1 million dollars it is 1 trillion i don't more than trillion dollars but let's say apple has market cap of 1 million dollars so let's say there are 1000 iphones in the world and each iphone is 1000 dollars so 1000 times 1000 will be 1 million dollars so that's how you calculate market cap so it is basically supply times value of each product they make so basically apple has market cap of 2 trillion dollars 2.67 trillion dollars so that means that's the amount of their goods that is flowing in the economy so if you look at the top companies with their market cap number is apple then saudi aramco microsoft google amazon and tesla so there are basically only six companies with market cap over 1 trillion dollars and do you know what's after that that is cryptocurrency so if you just combine market cap of bitcoin and ethereum then it's going to be more than trillion dollars so you cannot believe what's the scope of blockchain development how much money is to be made and how many people a lot of millennials people like us who are in their early 20 30 40s they believe in this technology and that's why i think you should learn because it is hard it is considered the internet of the 90s so let's talk about it so first of all if you look at the startups if you go to angel.co that is a page for startup jobs you can find over there you will find not just hundreds but thousands of openings for blockchain development hot startups right now for example top is 0x dydx teller development foundation and there are so so many openings for blockchain developers in so many startups throughout the us you can be a mobile or you can be a remote not mobile but remote engineer for these companies and you can apply from india anywhere so this shows the scope there's there's maker dao there's hiro so many blockchain startups for example hiro is working on smart contracts for bitcoin so there are are endless opportunities so that's why you should consider learning i have been learning as well i'll also show you a hello world app how i was able to make with the theorem as well in the later of the video now let's talk to alex and also dosto last week humne poll kiya tha to decide our next unacademy life class most students chose best country to study abroad rank by budget scholarships pr and undergrad masters ke liye puri in depth detail mein baat karenge about us canada singapore germany australia uk so stay tuned for that it is going to be an interactive live session jahan pe main aapke sare doubts clear karunga of all of these countries har country ki starting se lekar end tak hum in depth mein baat karenge ki kya pros and cons hote hain and why you should choose a particular country it's going to be at 6:30 pm ist on sunday 
आप रिमाइंड मी के बटन पे क्लिक कर सकते हैं सो यू डोंट मिस दिस ऑपरचुनिटी ऑल्सो अगर आप जेई की तैयारी कर रहे हैं आप अन अकेडमी की सुपर थर्टी टेस्ट सीरीज भी चेकआउट कर सकते हैं जहाँ पे अराउंड फिफ्टी लर्नर्स विल बी रैंडमली पिक्ड जो ये टेस्ट अटैम्प्ट करेंगे एंड आपकी जेई की प्रिपरेशन में काफ़ी हेल्प भी आएगी एंड अगर आपको कहीं पर भी कोड की जरूरत पड़े यूज कोड सिंह ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी टू फॉर डिस्काउंट एज वेल आई सी यू दैन So hello everyone today it's an honor to introduce a blockchain developer and I'm so lucky to work with him because he's the one who actually made me zero to actually hero in the knowledge related to cryptocurrencies and actually development on blockchain thank you thank you so much alex for being here no uh, my pleasure uh, awesome so first of all as an introduction i am an android developer so i make apps on android studio in java programming language so similarly you uh yeah so i also make apps in android but uh for the blockchain specific stuff i uh, i can write in languages like solidity which is a language special for ethereum and ethereum based projects uh and i use an ide called remix so basically the environment is different but at the end of the day it's programming for both of us now we are actually surrounded by blockchain all around us but we don't see it so the hottest stuff in blockchain uh Right now I'm really focused on Bitcoin and the Bitcoin ecosystem and the hottest thing in Bitcoin right now is something called Bitcoin Lightning. Uh so Bitcoin as a technology uh everybody's heard of Bitcoin uh but there's some fundamental issues with the original code base or with the original technology. Uh so when you want to send somebody Bitcoin, uh it takes a, a while for uh to to send that, those coins it can take a, uh like 30 minutes sometimes uh for the transaction to go through. uh and it's also relatively expensive so it doesn't make sense to send uh more than uh or it doesn't make sense to send uh less than like 10 US dollars uh over bitcoin on uh the like the original technology so what bitcoin lightning does is it uh basically it takes some bitcoin off of the main chain and moves it around super fast in this highway uh and then it publishes the results of the, uh, all those transactions and all the the fast moving stuff back onto the main chain So effectively you can spend your bitcoin you can move bitcoin around at the speed of the internet. And that's awesome and today actually I saw that Cash App one of the most used app in the US also introduced Bitcoin Lightning so I can rather than sending money from Harnoor to Alex using PayPal I can do it through Bitcoin Lightning on Cash App. That's It's right. awesome. So let's talk about the examples of blockchain in terms of development that we are surrounded by. So for example if you go to Angel Investment or Angel dot co, you will see that there are five hundred plus startups in blockchain development. There are thousand plus openings. So blockchain is actually blockchain development is actually really hard in the market. So what are the few examples of blockchain development or the projects near you you can think of? Yeah, so uh, there's a ton of projects that people can start working on uh, in the Bitcoin ecosystem. Uh, there's projects like uh, the Bitcoin development kits. That's basically uh a bunch of tools for developers to make bitcoin apps uh, there's the lightning development kit which is the same thing but uh -huh. for the lightning network uh but the, yeah so there's there's a ton of projects that people can work on awesome and the simplex example if you have to think about it, it could be will right the, the best example is like a will mm -hmm. um so let, let's say that you want to give your money to your kid someday uh and you want to split it up 50/50 between each kid mm -hmm. um so what we have to do today is you have to write down a will like in a contract you have to describe who uh gets what money and you have to give it to a lawyer and then the lawyer has to make sure that that carries out it's a very long cumbersome expensive process uh, -huh. uh but what this stuff allows you to do using the the blockchain ecosystem and and using what's called smart contracts uh you can define in this smart contract which is just a piece of code you can say that okay i'm going to put all of my money in this smart contract and when i die half of it goes to one place and half of it goes to the other and now i'm going to show you how to make a simple app in this technology using ethereum blockchain so basically as alex said we going to use solidity for ethereum blockchain so let's go to remix.ethereum.org let's create a new smart contract we will call it will.sol so i'm going to show you how to make a simple app using which you can transfer the money from parents account to your own account when one of your parent touch would never dies but let's say arbitrary case xyz is dying then how to transfer funds on the top of the program we will have the solidity version we can just copy it from the other contracts we have which i just did and the program will be to automatically get your will from your parents transfer to your own account so let's start the contract so contract will be called will decision and let's make a scope of it so these curly braces make it in a scope and then let's create a variable so that will be if 
that parent is alive or not. So let's make it true right now. Let's for a simple check. The person you are transferring the money from is alive right now. So now let's create a function or in Java, we call it method to check if your parent is alive or not. So we're going to call it validate is alive and it's going to be a view. We will explain. I'll talk, talk about what is view later, but let's consider this as a function right now. And we're going to check if that person is alive, if that is equal to true, then return true. So you're basically checking if the person is alive or not alive. If if it is not alive, that will be in the else case. That means you're going to return false. So basically you're just checking if the person is alive. So now let's try to run and compile. So we're going to go to section below files and that is the solidity compiler. And we're going to compile the code and see if there is any error or not. So after compilation, there is no, no such error we can find. Now we can deploy. So now what you have done is as an analogy, Aapne app banai for app store, right? You checked if there are any errors and now you're going to publish it to app store. These are the steps for iPhone, right? Similarly for blockchain, you compile and you deploy it to blockchain. But right now we are deploying it to environment called JavaScript VM. It's not the real Ethereum blockchain, but it's still like a test blockchain environment we have. So basically we're going to deploy it to JavaScript VM. That's a virtual machine blockchain. We're going to deploy it and then it will be an app right below us. So as, as Alex said that when you make a contract, it's not changeable. You cannot change it. So that's why we're going to deploy it. We can never change it. We will have to deploy a new contract to the blockchain if you want to test again. So that's how it's going to work. So we're going to tap on the method called validate is live and it's returning true. So basically one function in our blockchain is working, which is ready to be used to check if your parent or any one of your person in your family is alive or not. So it is, it is actually test environment. The real code could be a little bit more complicated, but fundamentally it's going to be the same. The concept is going to be the same. So that's returning true. Now, if you make it false and deploy again, now, remember that, as I said, you cannot change the same contract. Once you deploy it in the blockchain, it can never be changed. That's the beauty of blockchain. So basically, if you buy a property, you deploy it to smart contract, you can never change that this property is yours. So that's the beauty. You will have to make a new contract and delete the pre previous one. Now I deleted the previous contract. I'm running it again and it's returning false now because I changed the code I've made is alive false. Now let's do more with this program. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make another variable called bank balance, wallet balance, whatever you want to call it. So now we're going to make a method to transfer the inheritance money from parents account to child's account. So the condition will be if the parent is dying or is dead, just transfer the money. So we're going to say if is alive, is not equal to true or is double equal to false, whatever we're going to write it. Or in other words, we can just say not is alive. That is the same thing. Then we're going to add to wallet balance. So wallet balance plus, or you can just write the full, or you can say wallet balance equals to wallet balance plus 10. So you're adding 10 rupees. Let's say the will is that give 10 rupees to my kid when I'm passing out or passing away <laughs> and then return the same wallet balance. Now in else condition, it's going to be that if the parent is alive, do not transfer any money. So it will be just return wallet balance. Now let's compile this code first. The first step is going to be compile, compile will dot so and there is an error. Okay. So there's an error on line number 24. So on line number 24, there's an error because I forgot to put semicolon after return. Now let's compile again. No compile time error. Now we can go to the smart contract, deploy it into the blockchain. It's a JavaScript VM blockchain as we discussed. Now we're going to see how it works. So first we're going to call the method called validate is alive, which is false. So the parent has died. Now we're going to check wallet balance, which is equal to 10. Now we're going to transfer amount. So transfer amount, called it didn't return anything because this method is not a view this method is a view so basically what makes it a difference is it will print a value immediately in the contract but it's not a view so it's not printing it on the deployed contract as you saw that it's printing below validate is alive but it's not printing above transfer amount so after transfer amount we're going to check the wallet balance it is now 20 rupees so 10 rupees just got transferred. And if you want to run it in a loop, you can also do if you call transfer amount again, 
check wallet balance, it's now 30. So you can call it multiple times, which is a flaw in our program. We should transfer only once, but we can, we can change it later. But as a fundamental program to transfer money from your parents' account to child's account, the fundamental concept should be similar. It may have some complicated uh, terminologies here and there, but the fundamental con uh, concept is going to be the same. So that's how you can make a simple program to have will for your kids. And you don't have to deal with lawyers arguing over the, the, the specifics of the contract mm -hmm. uh, because the money just moves. It just works. Uh, and, and there's no uh, question about it. Yep. Awesome. And everyone thinks, thinks of the money you can make as a blockchain developer. It's really hard. There's a lot of demand. But what about how fun it is? So every day when you work as a blockchain developer, do you enjoy it? How, how do you feel about development? Yeah, yeah. so first I, I want to dispel maybe some of the myths uh, that it's that much harder than normal development. Uh, it's Blockchain is not way more complicated than normal development. If you're going to put in the work to become a software engineer, uh, you can ascend and become a, a blockchain engineer. The only reason why it's in such high demand right now is because not that many people are teaching the skills. Mm -hmm. uh, so you don't have to be a, a, a genius uh, to, to work on this stuff. Um, yeah, you just have to want to do it. Yeah, the community is small, but if you go ahead and become a part of the community, go to hackathons, then you can easily, you know, emerge in this technology. Yeah, yeah. So uh, there's a bunch of online resources. Like th the real reason why there's not a ton of people in the ecosystem right now is, is that the universities aren't teaching it. Mm -hmm. So like this stuff is too new and it's evolving too quickly mm -hmm. uh, for the universities to keep up. Uh, the universities are always 10 years behind. Like right now, uh, universities are starting to teach machine learning and data science. Uh -huh. uh, and that is what's super hot in the market right now. So like, frankly, the kids coming out of school right now, um, a lot of them are doing data science, but there's not that many data science jobs open mm -hmm. anymore because they're being filled. However, the blockchain stuff, they're not yet teaching that in school. So there's a ton of opportunities and they're not, there's not enough people to fill them. Yes. Now as a whole, can you please describe your day in life as a blockchain developer, what technologies you use and what kind of work you do? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I work in a research lab. So uh, my time is split two ways. So half of my time is spent on uh, researching the latest technologies. Uh, this stuff is changing really fast, so I have to try really hard to keep up with everything. Uh, and then the other half of my time is spent uh, doing normal engineering work, building demos, uh, building projects, uh, and delivering that just like any other job. Awesome. And in terms of uh, in terms of programming, so which languages you use the most and which ID you use the most? Yeah, uh, the vast majority of my work uh, is not actually blockchain specific stuff. So the, the majority of the development efforts go into building the applications around the blockchain stuff. Uh -huh. uh, so my favorite language to build projects in, is, or my favorite framework to build projects is, is React.js. Uh -huh. um, it, it's easy to use, it's relatively easy to learn, uh, and it can do everything that you needed to. Uh, so React.js is using JavaScript. Mm -hmm. um, it's a framework on top of JavaScript. When I'm actually doing the blockchain stuff, um, it's a lot of API usage. It's not a ton of uh, low-level uh, programming. Uh, if I have to write a smart contract, if I'm doing stuff in Ethereum, it's Solidity. Solidity. Um, but uh, that's honestly not the, 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 the majority of my work. Awesome. But for Ethereum network programming, so if someone wants to get started with Ethereum network, because currently I saw that there are maximum number of applications of making apps on the Ethereum network, right? There are 500 plus apps. It's more than that. It's actually, it's that literally thousands. Uh, thousands you, of. Yeah, you can spin up an app by yourself in half an hour with a laptop. Uh, yeah. Like it's, you can make simple apps incredibly quickly. Uh, yeah. And there's lists of projects of like funded projects. Uh, so like, like VC funded, pro like venture capital funded projects. And, and there's literally hundreds of them. Uh, right. and, yeah, so it's insane. It's insane, actually. And if some student, if, if a student, and if a student today wants to start blockchain development, what would you recommend on Bitcoin or Ethereum or Solana? Which network would you recommend? Yeah, so right now I'm, I'm really passionate about Bitcoin. So uh, I, I think that that is going to be the, the future, really. So if you're talking about what's going to be useful 50 years from now, my yeah. bet's on Bitcoin. Um, but there are a, a bunch of smart people working on other projects, but uh, that's where I'm, my focus is. As far as a place to start, um, with any of these projects, uh, first go to the, the websites of the project. So like Bitcoin has Bitcoin.org. It's not the Bitcoin.org doesn't run Bitcoin, but uh, they're just making the docs. Like it's just a project to help support new developers. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think it's developer.bitcoin.org mm -hmm. uh, has a bunch of awesome developer resources. Uh, if you're interested in the Ethereum side and, and working on Solidity code, 
Uh, if you go to ethereum.org, there's mm -hmm. a bunch of developer resources there. Mm -hmm. uh, in addition to just learning and, and, and coding yourself, I'd highly recommend anybody interested to get involved in the community. So uh, all across the world, there's meetups uh, for developers and support groups. Uh, but if there isn't in your area, I'd highly recommend trying to start one for yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, go online, find uh, one of these developer groups uh, on Bitcoin. BitDevs is an amazing organization across mm -hmm. the, the U.S. and they have others uh, uh, internationally as well. But reach out to one of these existing groups and ask what it takes to start one of these clubs yourself or one of these meetup groups yourself. Um, that is by far the best way to learn. Uh, so And hackathons. Yeah. Also hackathons. Yeah. yeah, hackathons are amazing. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and especially your journey was also through Hackathon, right? How you got into blockchain, by the way? That's actually how I got into computer science in general. Um, oh. Yeah, so like in school uh, or in college, I, I was, I went to a couple of hackathons and then I ended up running the hackathon at, at my school. Um, and that's actually how I got the job here. So uh, I was actually trying to get NCR uh, to sponsor uh, my school's hackathon oh. and uh, they didn't end up sponsoring, but uh, I ended up getting a, an internship out of it. Same. I also got through Hack City. And which school did you go, by the way? Uh, Auburn University in Auburn, Alabama. Awesome. And right now, we have the number one basketball team in the world. So, um, Very exciting. Yeah. Now, most importantly, if you want to get hired today as a blockchain developer, there are so many options. There are options in healthcare. Do you want to talk about healthcare? Yeah, sure. So uh, this is one of the hottest topics, at least in like the Ethereum lands. Mm -hmm. um, it's... Uh, there, there's a proposal to solve a very serious problem in, in, in uh, health healthcare right now, which is how do you protect your medical information, uh, yes. and how do you share your medical information to the people that need it, and only the pieces that you want to share. Uh, so, like, there's a situation where, um, or for for example, uh, let's say you wanted to go to a doctor's office and they try to prescribe you this new drug. Um, in order to make sure that the drug doesn't kill you because of the other medicines you're on, you have to give, a, give up a lot of information about yourself. Yes. And a lot of people aren't comfortable with sharing all this information uh, just because they're getting a new drug. Mm -hmm. So what you could do, or an example of something you could do with this, this technology to fix this problem is mm -hmm. you could describe all of these rules in a smart contract that lives on chain. You could write all of your information there and you could write some code to check to see if uh, a medicine is compatible with your current portfolio. That's amazing. I don't have to share data to anyone. And, and the magic is that even Tesla's key, if someone has Tesla's public key, you can see how much Bitcoin Tesla has. So it's transparent as well as keeps data private. Yeah, so uh, there's, it's a hot topic. So the yeah. privacy and transparency, it's two sides of the same coin. Mm -hmm. um, you want everything to be transparent. You want everything to be verifiable. Mm -hmm. But uh, there's a lot of business that you want to be doing uh, on the blockchain that you want to keep private. Uh, so there's a lot of cool um, technological advancements uh, to help uh, protect uh, the privacy of the people using it. Totally. And in, in India, in hospitals, there are not a lot of privacy rules. But in US, sharing data is a big issue. Yeah, but it's not just hospitals. It's, it's uh, let's say you have a business uh -huh. and you have a competitor down the street. You don't want your competitor, to, your competitor to be seeing everything that you're doing. Mm -hmm. Let's say you're making shoes and there's a shoemaker down the street. You don't want... Uh, them to see all of your sources for leather and whatever in the materials. There, there's a reason, even if it's not with health records, there's a reason why you want to have your information private everywhere. Totally. And another pro hard project is in real estate. Do you want to stay? Yeah, real estate's another super cool project. So uh, some really smart people are finding ways to represent legal uh, real estate contracts, like the, the the piece of paper that says I own this property. You can represent, or you can represent shares of that or, 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 or fractions of that as tokens on the blockchain. So then you can buy these tokens and holding the tokens uh, literally represents uh, fractional ownership of, of the property. Uh, so what, what this will look like and when, once it reaches maturity is mm -hmm. you can go to some exchange online and you can trade shares of or square feet of Amazon's headquarters. You can trade square feet of uh, these different properties. Wow, that's really, really amazing. Real estate is actually more futuristic than anything I've heard. Yeah. yeah, no, it, it's that, that's going to be super disruptive. Like uh, this is like a, a little known fact, but the vast majority of wealth in the world is stored in real estate. Uh -huh. So people are talking about like, uh, oh, it, it's uh, a common topic, especially in Bitcoin, is talking about how uh, Bitcoin is like a replacement for gold. Mm -hmm. Well, real estate is like a thousand times more valuable than all the gold combined in, in, in the world. Uh, so if we can make that, if we can give the same... Uh, luxuries that are afforded to Bitcoin to the real estate market uh, that will solve a ton of problems in society. Yep. And why do you think 
this whole blockchain ecosystem is better than centralized. So we are in decentralized world right now. So in which way it's not better and with which way this blockchain development in decentralized way is better? Yeah, uh, there is. It, it's a big question. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of uh, uh, there's a lot of things that, that this would improve. Uh, one example is censorship. Mm -hmm. So uh, let's say that I want to spend my money on, or let's say I want to say something publicly. Uh, today and I the, how do I publicly announce something well I go to a social media app and I announce it th there let's say that the social media company doesn't like what I have to say mm -hmm. they can censor me they can turn me off they can yes. remove me from their platform they can silence my voice well uh, that is not possible on blockchain so so on the blockchain network um, you, you there's no person that's in charge of your your data there's no person in charge of what you do also with the help of decentralized it's transparent and fast and also remittance is very useful for example if i want to send money to india no one can stop me and i can send bitcoin or ethereum immediately to india and it's expensive in india and you can also create a business do you know the story of ftx founder F no i don't <laughs> so he actually sent bitcoin from bahamas to japan and it wow. was more expensive in japan and by sending, by selling in Japan, buying in U.S. or Bahamas, he was able to make money. And so, so people can do in India as well. That's it's amazing, insane. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, I think remittance might be the single best use case uh, that is already really popular today. Yep. So, like uh, in South America, there's a bunch of countries that have basically switched completely over from Western Union over to uh, Bitcoin uh, to move money around. Awesome. Now, last question will be: What are the cons of being a blockchain developer? So. Uh, I think probably the biggest thing is that it's it's very similar to the stuff that's good about it. So, uh, blockchain is very new, uh -huh. therefore there's not a lot of support, uh, relatively speaking, uh, for for developers. If you don't know how to do something, uh, the chance of you finding out how to do it online is much smaller than uh, it would be if you're doing something that's been around for a while. Uh -huh. um, yeah, that's about it. No, I mean it, it's great. It, it's fun if you put in the work. It's to to learn how to do it. Uh, to learn the technology, it's absolutely worth it. Awesome. So thank you so much, Alex. It was a pleasure talking to you. Arnor, it's been a blast. Yeah. I'm sure this knowledge will help out a lot of students. And we will link down all the free resources you can use in the description below. Fantastic. Yep. Yeah. Thank this you so fun. much. Yeah, yeah, this is fun. Awesome. Thank you.